So I have to come out the gate with a big question. Who hates you this much that you don't have an Oscar nomination yet? Despite, well, despite Sideways, Up in the Air, Freaky Friday, all these things, Rain Over Me, Legally Blonde, all on your resume. You know, comedy doesn't really get, uh, you know, I've, I've done more comedy than, you know, you mentioned Freaky Friday and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's one of those sort of bitter ironies that I think the skill required to do some of those, uh, some comedy is, um, well, we'll put it this way. I find drama so much easier than comedy mm. um, because comedy, you have to find a very, you, you have to navigate a very fine line and, you, you know, you're trying to assist, you know, the, the timing, the humor, the you know, the energy, whereas um, drama just seems like, you know, whenever I get involved in drama, it seems like a much simpler job. So the fact is that awards don't go to comedies, not to yeah. comedy scores. Let's talk about the the elephant in the room and the why you're here. Uh, standing out, <laughs> a, 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 another, another home run for you. And it's not street comedy, it's dramedy. There's light moments, obviously, but then there are a lot mm-hmm. of touching heart moments, too. How were you able to identify those moments and then insert the right chords? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the great mystery. Um, it's a fine line. To find the right line between period and contemporary and the, the line between comedy and, and drama. I mean, one of the things I made a point of, you know, I grew up, you know, with... Laurel and Hardy regularly on the telly back in mm-hmm. my childhood. So I didn't re-listen to their theme because you know, my memory of it, for me, invokes so much that I thought probably better to be guided by the memory of how it felt rather than to be guided by the actual exact notes and yeah. the notation. You've worked with a lot of greats, obviously Alexander Payne a few times. I'm always going to say Mark Waters because Mean Girls means more to me than it really should. But uh, you, no, it's a fantastic film. Yeah, I mean, oh but that, God, I that is a beloved film um, yes. of, of many. With this, like you know, greatness that you've worked with, is there anyone that you're really dying to work with uh, that you haven't had an opportunity with that you're like, if they called me tomorrow, I'm there. Uh, well, I'm, I tell you, I'm very excited. I'm going to be working with Tom McCarthy. Uh, that that's coming up, and um, I've wanted to work with him for quite a while. And of course, he directed Spotlight, and mm-hmm. um, so that one I'm really looking forward to. Well, actually, I do have an answer for you, Jean Pierre Jeunet, um, who, of course, um, yeah, I would, of course, um, yes. I would love to work with uh, with him. That's my best answer to the question. Tom oh, McCarthy yeah. and Jean Pierre, Stan and Ollie. It is. Um... It's a, it's a movie that means a lot, and I, and I say that in, a, in the vaguest term, but very specifically to a friendship and to a relationship that is um, born and bred over years, and that there's resistance, and then there's like anger, but yet there's a love at the base of that. When you watch the movie, obviously you watch it unscored, right? <laughs> so Correct. So when you watch it unscored, were you able to like identify that immediately? And then you were like, oh, I- I'm feeling where this is going just as you were watching it for the very first time? Oh, certainly. I mean, so- sometimes because the music does give you so much more information, um, sometimes – you know, watching a film without music, it's it's the film plus the discussion with the director that gives you the information. But certainly at other times, it's possible to have a very strong sense of how this should feel and, and where this can go. But I, but I think it's, you know, one of the things I'd like to do is contribute something new rather than simply amp up what's already there. If, if you've got a celebratory moment, you just go, oh, yeah, we can make this more celebratory. That's fine. And that's often necessary. But when it's something which wasn't already there, that takes longer to f- figure out because oh. you're looking at something just going, yeah, this, but there's an understory, uh, you know, or, or there's, there's something else going on. What is it? And how can the music bring that out? We have hundreds and thousands of readers on awardcircuit.com that look up to every aspect of the film industry from actors, composers, cinematographers. Is there something that you're really passionate about that you want my readers to look up following this interview? Well, I love the charity, uh, the uh, Center for Science Education, which unfortunately just has to try and protect two basic concepts, uh, evolution and global warming, and help them you know, remain uh, taught in schools. And um, I- I'm passionate about that because everything changes when you have an educated 
you know, um, population. And because these are, you know, as vital things and, and, and interesting times. And uh, so I'm very passionate about hanging on to facts and reality. And uh, so the Centre for Science Education is, is one um, I'm very keen on. Greenpeace as well. I've been a lifelong member of Greenpeace. 